I'm a really big believer that when things are not good for you and you are not willing to um, to end them or you know end a relationship or get away from a certain uh, away from a situation that is not for you, the universe will do it for you. So it was painful, but it had to happen. I mean, it just it, you know that relationship. It didn't make sense. Absolutely. You know, it did not make sense. Hello and welcome to Grief, Gratitude and the Gray in Between podcast. This podcast is about exploring the grief that occurs at different times in our lives in which we have had major changes and transitions that literally shake us to the core and make us experience grief. I created this podcast for people to feel a little less hopeless and alone in their own grief process as they hear the stories of others who have had similar journeys. I'm Kendra Rinaldi, your host. Now, let's dive right in to today's episode. All right, well, welcome to today's episode. I have my dear friend Giselle online, and um, Giselle and I have been friends for a long time, um, but our friendship just got a kind of, we reconnected a few years ago again. Um, It's just been an interesting journey of our friendship, but that's not what today's episode is about, but (laughs) it's really more about uh, your life, Giselle. But if you want to int- uh, introduce yourself a little bit, just tell me who you are. Tell our listeners who you are. Hello. Um, and I'm so excited to be here. Um, so my name is Giselle Taminis, and I am uh, a health and wellness coach. And I also have a project called The Vision Project, um, where I help women um, manifest um, their best life. And yes, Kendra and I have had a very interesting, um, very interesting relationship. I think we were just meant to meet. (laughs) We were. We were meant to meet for sure. Our lives were meant to to intertwine in some ways or another, Mm -hmm. very interestingly, uh, for sure. And then, um, so the reason I wanted to have you on the podcast was because Um, As you may know, since you actually have been part of this process of even me creating this podcast because you're part of my Bliss Tribe, the purpose of our Bliss Tribe is to be able to support each other in our endeavors and this podcast would probably not be happening had it not been for the support of my Bliss Tribe as well. So um, thank you, Giselle, for for being part of of this process as well. Thank you for getting us together. For sure, um, because I'm the one that hasn't met the other two <laughs> in person. But Kendra was the um, the one that pressured us into. Oh, pressured. Okay, I see how. Uh huh. Uh huh. I pressured. No. I bribed you all. You did bribe pressure. You <laughs> but um, but yeah, I definitely think you were the the maker, the creator. I just happened to sure. know and you all, been, and it's been a huge, um, huge blessing um, to be part of it. Yeah, thank you. No, and in that process then of being able to explore this topic of grief, and because I, I've known you for some time, um, I wanted today our interview to kind of lead a little bit into the topic of grief when it's not tied into a death. And um, I mentioned in my intro as how grief can happen when there's any major change that occur- occurs in our life. Um, major life transition, uh, sometimes loss of dreams, loss of um, identity, uh, loss of uh, of where we've lived, loss of family members, uh, of loss of relationships. So um, uh, that's the topic that I think we're going to be able to share a little bit with our listeners today. So, in your life, what would you say has been one of those pivotal moments that has? Uh, and has brought grief into your life? Uh, so, and um, definitely, I think that definitely the, the, my biggest moment of grief, uh, which I think it's interesting to point out that I only realized recently and through conversations with you that I had gone through grief 
um, because we tend to um, we tend to identify grief with death. Um, and again, like what you're saying, there's so many other situations where we we go through grief. Um, so I never saw it as grief, but I think definitely uh, for me was um, and what's definitely been the most pivotal moment in my life was um, I got a divorce. I went through a divorce uh, 15 years ago. Um, and it was a long separation process. Um, and, um, I definitely think that the moment that it occurred, it felt like a death. Um, I distinctly remember thinking, you know, like, you know, part of me is dying. Um, so yeah, I think that's definitely, that's been my, wow. my, no, my that moment. That is a, that is a very powerful because to some extent part of you was dying because it's the identity of you as this wife was dying. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So um, so this was again fifteen years ago. You said it was fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. Fifteen years, years ago. ago. How long had you been in that relationship? <clears throat> We'd I'd been in that relationship for about seven years. Um, seven years, and you had a child years. in that relationship. Yeah, so I had a three-year-old. I had a three-year-old, and then um, we went through a long separation process because, um, you know, different situations, you know, but I think mostly, <laughs> I think he fell out of love. I also feel like it was a very codependent relationship, so it wasn't, it wasn't an ideal relationship from the get-go. Um, but we also, we tend to get very attached, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. we, and because it was very codependent, I had attached my whole identity to that relationship. Um, and that person was very controlling as well. So I had given up complete control over to him. And then I also had lost a lot of my identity. I felt like I had lost a lot of my identity mm -hmm. after I had a child, um, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I think a lot of people have kids in their early twenties. I was, had just turned 26 when I had my daughter and I felt like I was a teenage mom. It was a really hard adjustment for me. Uh, that is, that is very uh, interesting that you bring that up because, um, that is something that sometimes people don't realize as well of how much grief can be experienced even in a happy moment that occurs. Mm -hmm. So even though you became a mom and that's a happy experience, there was part of you that somewhat died in that process of becoming a mom. Part of your identity also shifted in that process. So it's like a whole bunch of layers as well. So you had had your child at 26. Part of your identity was kind of dissolved uh, mm -hmm. in that moment. Right. Okay. And then and three years later... And then three years, we start going through a divorce. So, um, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and the divorce was linked most, you know, a big part of it was an affair. Uh, but, you know, I think when things, I, I'm a really big believer that when things are not good for you and you are not willing to, um, to end them or, you know, end a relationship or get away from a certain, uh, away from a situation that is not for you, the universe will do it for you. Mm. So it was painful, but it had to happen. I mean, it just, it, you know, that relationship, it didn't make sense. Absolutely. You know, it did not make sense. Uh, I remember after um, we separated, like, you know, and people found out about it, like people that knew or like a lot of women close to me, they're like, you know, they were like, I don't know how you were with that person for so long, you know, mm. or I never liked that person or, you know. All and they said this things. after, they would say this after the fact, of course, they wouldn't after. say it while and, you were you married. Know, some, yeah. people, some people were brave enough to say it before, but I didn't take it, you know, I didn't take it well. Um, you know, so it, you know, it had, that relationship had affected all sorts of relationships um, mm. around my what life. Kind of, what kind of relationships do you think that um, were probably the ones that most strained in that process of you kind of losing yourself within that uh, marriage? Uh, like which other relationships do you feel that were the most strained? I, you know, I didn't have any, I didn't have any close female relationships during that time. Um, I had episodes of like a lot of conflict with my parents. Um, 
I mean, I think back and it was very lonely. I, you know, it was the ghost of me. I wasn't myself during that relationship mm. at all. The um, ghost of you. That's such a powerful like, imagery right there. The ghost of you. Like just like a, just the part, I just kind of like got like ooh, chills with that imagery because that is just like just the resemblance of a part of you was just there. Mm. Like not your whole self was present. No. It wasn't my, no, it wasn't my whole self Mm. at all. I was, um, I had given away all my power. I had gotten, you know, after we separated and we're separated for a while. And then we, we, um, we tried again for a short time. Um, but remember, um, clearly I went to get shoes after we separated and this person had a lot of control over me, like even what, like I wore. Okay. (laughs) And then, um, Mm. and I went to buy shoes and I remember, having a panic attack in the middle of the store and like running back to my car. Cause I, I, I like, I just, I, I didn't even know how to buy shoes for myself. Wow. It was, um, in terms of choosing the shoes and choose a paying in terms of like knowing whether the value was something that was okay. What, you know, know, I think, I think, in, in different situations, even if it's not a situation that, that it's good for you, you get used to that that is the way things are, you know. And, and you know, as I've um, in the past 15 years and I've worked so much in personal development and spiritual growth, I see it in every situation in our lives. You know, um, we 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 feel like crap. <laughs> we feel really bad, but we're so used to feeling bad or disempowered or sick that that becomes a reality. So I think for me at that point was I was claiming my power, but I think there was a lot of fear in claiming my, in reclaiming my power. Right. Because you didn't know, because again, it was only the ghost of you that was functioning at that moment. It was only a part of you that didn't even know how to deal with it because the other part of you had kind of gone into the, into the unknown for they know for a while um, for a while you had, to, right. you had to kind of reclaim all those parts of you that you had kind of put in the in the in the what do you call that back burn or our spanglish i wish we could say we make this podcast um back burner like in the back burner, like in the back burner. Back burner. yeah in the correct. back burner yeah mm-hmm, the back mm-hmm. burner yeah definitely i think for sure i mean my whole i the only way i was operating on how to make this person happy basically you know and and walking on eggshells and um, it was just, you know, it wasn't good and it was toxic, but I didn't, I did also didn't recognize it at the time either. Right. Like it, I was just used to that. That's how it was. Um, I don't recall feeling happy. So I think the, I think the main thing I was able to recognize because so to give you some context, I was, I spent the two previous years very, very sick, um, and it was, you know, it was just my body breaking down from all the negative situation that was going on. Uh, and, you know, so I was suffering physically because I was sick and I was also suffering emotionally because just the relationship was so toxic, you know, and I, you know, I, I was belittled and, you know, it was really bad. Um, but at some point I recognized that I wanted to be happy. So that was my main, that was my, I think that was the carrot that I dangled for myself to make tough, tough situations and to push myself through the pain and through work through the pain to get better. Mm. So my, my main thing, I decided I wanted to be happy. You know, I was 28, 29 years old. And I remember, you know, thinking I, I cannot do this. I am, you know, I am dying. Like this is, you know, I'm. I'm alive, but I'm not. And I want, I want to be happy. Um, so I think it takes a lot of guts. It takes a lot of guts to suddenly like realize that in, you know, in, in the, when you're in the thick of it, you know, like to be able to make that realization and that a glimpse of your whole identity kind of came in to kind of let you know and tap you on your shoulder or your soul or whatever we want to call it. The two of us do like those, um, the, 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 the concept of our soul, the whispers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, so for you to be able to recognize that whisper and actually take action, that's huge. Yes. I've recognized that later on having conversations with other people. I didn't 
you know, I didn't see it at the time. And again, this was all on my own. You know, I, I didn't go to therapy. I didn't have a support group. I didn't have, you know, it, this was not, you know, I didn't even have, you know, like for now we have the bliss tribe, you know, and I know like mm -hmm. we share with each other, you know, when we have challenging times and we give ourselves feedback, I had no feedback at that time. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and yeah, I, do, I recall just feeling, you know, I, I was so sick of suffering, like so tired of suffering. I'm like, I cannot do this anymore. I want to be happy. And then I think as, as I surrendered to that choice that I was making, that I was choosing to be happy, then, um, you know, then things started happening for me, um, mm. you know, which is, um, <laughs> I, the, the, the reason I chose to, um, actually leave my ex-husband was because, um, he was turning 30 years old and he decided, I, he told me I wasn't invited to his birthday celebration. Oh, um, and, um, and, um, and, and he said, you know, the, like all, all, like all this other stuff, but I clear, I remember that night. I'm like, I had the realization. I, I'm like, I am suffering so much for a person that does not consider me worthy to be part of his birthday celebration. Like, wow. This is like, the first time I'm hearing point? this. Yeah. This is the first time. Like, it's interesting. Cause even though, cause during that time, well, mm -hmm. this is a while ago when, when this is not when we were, um, had really reconnected that much. I think we were Facebook friends at that point, And, um, but that's probably the extent of our friendship at that moment. So I didn't know all this that you are sharing at this moment. Do you think that part of it, aside from you choosing your own happiness in that moment, um, that the fact of having this daughter, um, a daughter, have a huge impact of you making that choice of really shifting and leaving mm. the relationship? No, I think she was, um, no, she was one of the reasons I was holding on so tightly, mm. for sure. Um, I, um, well, there's two things. One, I didn't know that the reason I was sick was because my body was rejecting like all this that was going on. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I didn't recognize it at the time. So my mother had health issues when she was, you know, since she was young. So I, I remember thinking, oh man, there's genetics, you know, I'm going to be as sick as my mom is, you know, uh, because my mother has never had chronic diseases, but there's always been things like going on. So I was like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, like the reason I have like my back, I can't move, you know, it's because I am here, you know, it's like, you know, I thought it was all genetic um, at that time. So I didn't think it was because of everything that was going on. The biggest, you know, I think the biggest situation that caused me grief was the fact that my daughter would not grow up with her mom and dad together. Mm. And that broke me to pieces. It, it it broke me to pieces. And I, you know, I would have conversations with him. Like, I'm like, are you okay with this? Like, it does not cause you any pain to think that you will not grow. Like you will not raise your daughter. Like this, you know, like this doesn't break your soul that you will not raise your daughter. daughter. Um, and, you know, and I, I, I think I pressured the whole situation for us to be together because I didn't want, you know, my parents are still together. They're going to have their 50 year anniversary this year. I had this attachment, a big attachment to, um, to my daughter having her mom and dad together, um, mm -hmm, you know, and having mm -hmm. a family. So, um, now I, I, now obviously like setting an example for her, you know, and standing up for myself and, you know, being, having an empowered mom, I can see it more now, like how that's a value there. But at that time when she was so young, I really just wanted her to have, you know, her mom, you know, her mom and dad. But I also had to recognize that he didn't really care. You know, he was just like, but there's tons of people that are divorced out there, you know, and they, you know, they raise kids and the kids grow up fine. Like, what's the big deal? Um, mm -hmm. So I had to let go of trying to make things work for someone that wasn't really interested in having, you know, in making things work. So wow, uh, I think the biggest grief, you know, the, in the biggest, you know, I, we have these expectations that we have and, and sometimes mm -hmm. we just have to let go of those expectations. And I think that was the first one that I, you know, that I, I just had to let go of. 
Um, let go of the idea that your daughter was going to grow up with both parents. Like that was like uh, that and that you were going to have a support system in that process of raising your daughter, um, that you had to let go of that. Um, and so that was one of those grieving moments that again, probably things that you realized later, Oh yeah, I did. I did experience grief in that process yet right, in that absolutely. moment. You're so you're also on survival mode. You're suddenly here raising a child on your own. A lot of times it doesn't even allow sometimes even space for your own emotions to process because you are more focused about whether your child is adjusting. Okay. With the change, um, and things like that. Uh, so take us a little bit into that so, in the moment in you which know, I, you are suddenly now here on your own raising so, your so child. I was blessed with a... So I was blessed or I was given the... Te- you know, I was given a daughter that was built for this situation. Um, extremely resilient child. Um, I had... Um, ever since she was born, I felt that you know, that um, she needed to be, create strong relationships with all of my extended family. And she needed to, um, and the more love she uh, received, even from outside the circle of just her mom and dad, the better she would be. So Mm. um, my mother took care of her for about a year and a half, helped babysit her. And then, um, and I sent her to Columbia with my mom for a month when she was six months old. So oh she, wait! Oh, so she had already been so when she was sick. This is when you were married. I when you were married. still married, you had mm-hmm. sent her already to Colombia for six. When she was six months old, was this six because you were old. returning? This is because you were returning to work. Um, no, I was. Like it was um, my dad. I wanted my dad to meet her, and my mother was going to Colombia for some time, so I sent her with her. So um, mm-hmm. Simone, you know, she was about two. She was when we separated she had just turned three in that time period she had been she would about twice a year go to columbia with my family oh so it's like her extended yeah so you had a village that had already she had a village yeah she she had had a village village. and she was attached to that village okay Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. she you know uh, there was like after christmas when she was two my gosh maybe she was one and a half Maybe two, one and a half. No, I think she had, was two. Um, she, you know, there were times where she would go to Columbia, like somebody would come visit us and they'd be like, oh, can you send Simone? And I would be like, sure. And Simone would be like, I want to go to Columbia because she would like speak full whole sentences since she was like um, a year old. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we would, you know, she would go with like my cousin and not even turn around and cry. And she was like two and a half. You know, my, wow. my kids now would never do that. <laughs> so she was strong and resilient. So I definitely think the universe gave me this daughter because if I thought she was fragile and like so attached, it would have broken me. I It would have mm. been really, really hard. But she was resilient. She was fine. Like she, she loved her extended family. She didn't. The other thing was that her dad wasn't a great dad either. You know, he wasn't like, oh, you know, my husband now is like very hands-on with our little daughters, plays with them, like all this sorts of stuff. He wasn't. So thankfully Mm -hmm. it worked out because she didn't feel this huge void when we separated. So, so you touched on something right now that it's kind of turning then this table, uh, you mentioned now your husband. So here it is, you had a, a relationship at which did not end up working out after 15 years ago and you were married for Remind you said seven, yeah. We you were, were in that, you were yeah, in that relationship uh, we for seven. We were in a relationship for seven years. Seven years, then, um, how, then you're here, a single mom of a daughter. Did it? Did it occur to you in that moment that you would ever be able to, um, trust again, be in a relationship again, be able? Yeah, like, d- did you ever think that in that moment of that separation, do you remember your emotions in that moment? I don't remember. Um, I I remember um, knowing I wanted to have more kids and I wanted to have a family. Okay. I knew, I knew that, I knew that from the beginning that I wanted more children and I wanted to, I wanted to have a family. Um, but I wanted to go back just for a second 
because during that whole period where I said that I was like broken before we separated mm -hmm. um, and after the birthday party, I didn't get invited to. Yes. Um, oh my when gosh. I, that, when, I still, I, that still kind of got me like, what? <laughs> That's your wife. What do you mean? Back, was it a guys only party? Like, I'm like, it wasn't. Wait. So that, that's what he said. But then I started getting uh, calls from um, other wives that were at the party. They're like, why are you not here? Eh, wow. I'm like, oh, that's a very good question. I just don't have the answer to. Um, but that night I decided we were separating, actually. Mm. And um, so when he got home, I was like, this is pointless. He said, I actually had to go to, I was uh, scheduled to go to Colombia for a wedding. I was part of a wedding party at the end of August. And this was during the summer. This was probably like three weeks before that. I said, you know what? I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to go to Colombia for the wedding, but I'm just not coming back. I'm, I, I, need to, I need to leave. Because at that point, I figured I wasn't at a job. I was not at a job that I loved. Um, I felt so broken. I felt I could not function. I knew I wanted to be happy. And I was like, I need to go. I can't, I can't function. So I actually left mm -hmm. for Colombia for nine months. I moved in with my parents, signed up, um, put Simone in preschool. And then, uh, because I figured if I stay here, I'm going to get child support. I'm going to still going to have to work. But if I go to Colombia, I won't have to work. And whatever I get in child support, I can pay for preschool. Rin de mas. Rin de mas. Like we say in Spanish. Rin yes, de mas. <laughs> so much. So I moved back to my It goes much further. Yeah. And painted and signed myself in painting classes and worked out and just took care of myself for nine months. So and that I, right there, that's a huge, that was, that was the self-care process that you did. Yes in that grieving process to be able to kind of go through yeah, that exactly. uh, of, okay, this chapter's over. Now it's time to reconnect with me, find okay. me, find okay. the whole parts of me that have okay. been sitting in the back. And that was the time you took uh, to be able to do that. What? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, wow. you know, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't final. I mean, the separation wasn't final. He was, it was a codependent relationship. So as much as I depended on him, he depended on me as well. Mm. Um, so we tried again, um, like nine months later, and then we were together for like three weeks. And then after that point, it was, um, it was final, but, um, but I had the strength at that point. I ha I needed to leave. I needed to leave. I need, and I remember friends of mine saying, Oh my God, you're leaving. You're leaving your house. You're leaving. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm like, this is all material things. I do not care about any of this. I said, mm -hmm. I care about myself. I need to take care of myself. And I just, I can't, I can't, I can't do this the way I am. I, you know, I felt so, I was so broken emotionally. I just, I, I knew I wouldn't be able to function unless I reclaim myself. I, I did things that I enjoyed doing. I, um, I got away from him and that, you know, the toxicity of the relationship. Um, so I, wow. I think that was, I thought, I think that was a big gift that I gave that, to myself. And I also realized now like that I had a lot of bravery at taking, you know, making that decision. Um, and I think ultimately the, the choice that I had made a few months earlier that I wanted to be happy was what gave me the strength. I also realized now I never fear judgment. And there's so many men and women going through toxic relationships, marriages, and they stay on because how people are going to judge them or perceive them or, you know, what are people going to think? Um, mm, and I'm mm -hmm. so happy. It never crossed my mind. I, you know, and I look back now, I'm like, I was the only one getting a divorce. You know, no one around me was getting a divorce. Because yeah, some of them were probably just starting to get married. By the time right, we were divorcing, it was the time too. I was just getting married. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so, <laughs> I, you know, for me, I was, you know, I never, it, it just, it, what other people would think never crossed my mind at all. And I'm so happy because we can get so trapped on, on people's opinions and people's perception of our lives and how they're going to judge us. And I'm very, you know, I, I, I'm very happy that just, it, it wasn't the case for me in that situation. Yeah. It's especially because things like that sometimes culturally too, and that, you know, when there's certain ideas that you have of what a marriage should have looked like and it should last forever. And this, like you were just saying, the example you had of marriage or your parents had that have been married for so long that, 
you're like, what now am I like things like, did I, am I failing because I didn't accomplish this, you know, right Mm -hmm. now. And so sometimes people hold on to these ideas because they do not want to, uh, disappoint sometimes even their own idea of in th- that they have in their mind of what it was supposed to be. And they hold on to these things either for themselves or like what you were saying, the judgment of others, that at least you didn't have that part because you didn't care about the judgment of others in that process. So so that, that was one of the things that kind of set you free to make that decision um, to really leap into finding your true happiness. Uh, yeah, which absolutely. happened to be away from him. Now, in that process, too, of doing that, like, what are some of the things, like, because you had to regain, of course, aspects of yourself that you had probably kind of left again in the back. Mm-hmm. Now, who did you, how, what are the things that you feel in your personality that kind of shifted and transformed because of that process of mm-hmm. going through that hardship? Oh, what? Or like what are attributes that you, like right now you already said you're so, you know, you were brave to step into that. Okay. So did you even know you had that strength in you? No, I, as I, I like, I can definitely, it was a process. I think the first step was deciding I wanted to be happy. Um, the second, you know, I was saying the gift that I wasn't thinking I was, it never occurred to me what other people would think. Um, Mm -hmm. the third one is I never, although I was, my identity was very attached to the marriage, the failing, I never, I, I never felt I was a failure because the marriage had failed. Okay, great. Okay. So you had, you separated that part of your identity, not because of the marriage failing, did you fail? Exactly. I never Mm -hmm. saw it as a failure of me. Um, Mm -hmm as a failure. Yeah. I never saw it as a failure of me. I just, um, you know, I saw it as, again, my focus was so much on being happy and not wanting to suffer anymore that I think that's what, what didn't allow me to focus on these other, you know, on these other, um, things. Negative self-talk. Yeah. Negative self-talk that could have happened. Negative self-talk. Yeah. Um, And, you know, then after, you know, deciding I wanted to be happy, then I chose to do things that brought me joy. Um, Mm. My job wasn't bringing me joy, so I left my job. Um, (laughs) Going to Colombia and spending time with family brought me Mm -hmm. joy, so I chose that. Um, Deciding to, um, you know, to start taking care of myself. And, you know, I, I, I still had, like, pregnancy weight I had not lost, so you know, losing weight, taking care of myself, you know, was something that made me happy. So I did that. Signing up for painting and decorating classes um, brought me joy. So I signed up for that. And then I also, um, I have a good, um, a lot of, a big connection. Like my my family has a lot of girl women. I have a lot of female cousins and we're really close. And so connecting with them was a big part and then traveling um, within Colombia. So I, I, gave myself nine months of joy. Um, and I before, think, before you tried those three weeks of, before I tried those three re- weeks. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And then and you kind of just needed to get back. It was more like a test of, let me just make sure. <laughs> like, let me, you know, like, I knew I, I was able to recognize during that time a way that he didn't love me. So mm-hmm. I think I was able to set not expectations, but you know, what was non-negotiable. And I knew at that point, when we tried those three weeks, I was like, being in a relationship with there is no love is a, is not an, is a non-negotiable for me. I'm mm-hmm. not going to be in a loveless marriage so my daughter can have a mom and a dad. Um, and I think at that point, because I had already grieved the idea that my daughter would grow up with a, da- with a dad, with her mom and dad. Um, I had already, you know, that was settled. And I think I was okay with that situation. I also, the fact that she'd already been away nine months and she'd been okay, um, made me think that she would be okay regardless, um, you know, whether we stayed together or not. Uh, and then, uh, but shortly after we got in, you know, we were together again for three weeks, I think within a week, I knew that it was not going to work out. Um, yeah, that it was, how was it, how was it for Simone to, having been away from 
you know, like having you guys be, I mean, she was young, right? So did she know, recognize when you guys went back to trying it for those three weeks, did she, like, how was it again then the separation after for your, for her? Like, again, you mentioned how resilient she is as a child. Like, how was it, did she even notice that, you know, because some of those things, again, we kind of don't do things like even the fact that even sometimes I'd say for ourselves, even sometimes we don't even change where the house where we're at just because we don't want to have to change the school district for our children, you know, things like that, that we're constantly trying to protect them from change sometimes. So like in that moment, yeah, like how, what, what, how was her way of reacting with those in that process? If you remember. She, again, I was blessed with a very resilient child she went to four or five different preschools in that year and mm-hmm. it made, and she was absolutely fine with it. Like it was never, never had a problem with it. She was fine with the change. She was fine with the moving. Um, she, um, she was excited to see her dad that time. We actually moved to, we, we, so we lived in Maryland before we separated. And then when we reconnected, we had moved to Florida, uh, to Miami. So we mm-hmm. met again in Miami. We set up a, a new home for us. We signed her up in a new preschool. We were ready to go. Um, and I mentioned there was infidelity. So the the three, like the, the three weeks was because it took me three weeks to confirm that there was in fact, oh. in fact, had a girlfriend. Um, and then from the moment that I found out he had a girlfriend, which I will say it was the darkest, like scariest day of my life because I was able to see parts of me that I just never want to see, or like we never want to acknowledge that we can have that level of darkness within us. Um, mm. From that to me leaving definitely was less than 24 hours. The darkness, did it come from the thoughts that came to your mind from the way oh my you God. behaved yes. from yeah. the anger, the res- like just the disappointment, the uh, what what kind of emotions there was, would you say that were attached to that part that you think are like the dark side, if you want to share? So there was a lot of pain because I, I knew this was going on and I had, um, I had asked him many times as a friend, as a wife, as a, as a wife that is mad, as a a wife that is trying to be understanding, like in all sorts of ways. Um, and even d- on my time, during my time away, um, and there were, you know, and there was always a lie or an excuse. Um, and I chose to believe him rather than, than believe myself. Mm-hmm. And ultimately I was right about every single situation where I had been like, Oh, this is weird. I think this person is your girlfriend, you know, and he'd give me an excuse. And I was like, Oh, okay. Because there's many times in our lives, I think that we have a wound, something that really hurts, and we keep putting a bandaid on it and a bandaid on it, bandaid on it, rather than just like get the stitches, you know, get something mm-hmm. like really deal with it. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately, I think we need to be ready to face it, right? Um, so when I found out, I had a lot of anger. I, um, I, I remember um, there had been a situation where this lady in Texas had run over her husband after she found an affair. And I remember thinking like, Oh, oh I, I, rem- I think that was in the, new- yeah, that? that was like in the, was like yeah, yeah, yeah. in the driveway or something. Yes. 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 yes yeah. Yeah. I, I really remember. <laughs> no, I'm laughing, like, oh. but I'm not laughing. It shouldn't be funny. I'm sorry. It I shouldn't know, be no, funny. No. It shouldn't I be laughed funny. too because I remember in that moment, I, I remember thinking, Oh my God, I can totally see how that can happen. Like I had so much anger in me. I could have killed them. I swear that if I did listen, and I, you know, maybe some people don't believe in God, but at it that doesn't, moment, it, in this case, in this case, it's all about your perspective and your own process. So it okay. doesn't matter what For the listeners moment, believe. It's what about you believe. I was yeah. like, mm-hmm. God, I am so happy. I have you in my life and in my heart, because had I mm-hmm. not had God in my heart, and felt like God was with there, I would have killed him. I had Mm -hmm. so much anger. And I was able to even recognize that anger. Like in that moment, I was like, oh my God, is this like the devil? Like, what the hell is this? Like, it was so scary. The level of like, oh gosh, like, ah. And it's, that's the only time in my life that had a glimpse of that. I mean, (laughs) of that side of of you. It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was dark. It was painful. Um, I remember I called my brother 
when I found out, um, because listen, the, you know, I had like a major, like major breakdown. It was, mm. it was bad. Um, and I remember I called my brother who, I guess my oldest brother has been, um, has been my go-to person many, you know, in, in, in a lot of hard times. And, you know, we shared, um, you know, like we talk like girlfriends and, you know, um, but at that moment I called him. Um, and I, you know, I told him what was going on and he's like, Giselle, remember that we only receive the truth when we're ready for it. Mm. He's like, if you know, if you found, you know, if you got confirmation today it's because you're ready to deal with this confirmation now. Um, That's wise. That's wise. Yes. Because you, as you said, you had not received it nine months late, be, earlier. You just, mm -hmm. you had just decided to leave at that moment because he didn't invite you to his birthday party and other things had just kind of been failing already, mm -hmm. that recognition. And then nine months of separation, then three three weeks together and this happens. And it's, uh, that's really wise what he said, because had that happened nine months earlier that you would have recognized like that. I didn't have uh, the strength. I you, didn't have you the strength not, that nine months yeah. before to deal with So it. those nine months really gave you that strength to be able to, yeah, to not run over him, not do the driveway. <laughs> yeah, not, 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 not kill him. And then, um, and then, you know, that time I remember, like, he went into the other bedroom with, you know, with Simone to take care of her, you know, and, and to allow me space to not kill him, um, you know, and to, to grieve, really. I mean, it right. was, you know, it was, um, it was just a lot, you know, a lot of, 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 yeah, of grief, you know, it was like, a, yeah. it, was a, it, was a, it was a death. Absolutely. Um, and, um, after I spoke to my brother, I remember, you know, having praying and saying, okay, God, um, I am done with suffering. I do not want to suffer anymore. And if there's anything, I, but I'm, 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 I'm willing to face any pain I need to face now. Like I can do this, just send it all. I'll take over the pain, but I'm dealing with this now and I'm going to be happy. Like, I just want to get this over with. And mm. that is the decision I made in that moment. And that's what helped me through everything after that. My choice okay. that I was willing to go through pain in order, you know, and, and, and deal with the pain and face it and, you know, process it. Um, you know, and then now I say pain, I think now I'll probably say like, uh, go a lot, you know, go through the grieving process that I would mm -hmm. need to go through, um, to be happy again. But I, um, that was a decision I made in that, in that time, you know, in that and, moment. And, and, you know, think you, you were saying like any characteristics, attributes that came out from that, I definitely believe that that was a pivotal moment for me. And that has led me and given me the, the power to make many difficult decisions in my life since then. Um, I am not afraid of pain. I will take, I will take the pain because I know pain doesn't kill me. Pain doesn't kill me. You know, I realized, uh, you know, a, a few months after I separated, I was with my, um, with one of my aunts and she was like, honey, you have to understand that things don't happen to you. They happen for you. That's not the first time I hear that um, that saying. I heard it first from a friend that I'll also be um, having interviewing her. Exactly that same that it same phrase. So you powerful. Know, it's so, so powerful. powerful. And when and you, when you're in the midst of grieving, when you're in the midst of pain, oh my! You know, it just you know I you know I decided I you know I was willing to go through the pain, but then now I felt like okay, this pain has a purpose. You know, this pain has a purpose. What is the purpose? Why do I need to learn? And I, mm -hmm. I, I get impatient because, um, because I don't, you know, I don't hold on to the pain. I even had a conversation with my husband last night about, you know, a, a difficult situation that we went through about five years ago. And he was asking me why, like, why did I do that? Like, what pushed me? And I'm like, and I told him, I said, I have chosen in my life that I don't suffer. I, I'm, I choose that I don't suffer. I will face you know, difficult and painful situations, I will go through them. Um, but I'm willing to make the difficult decisions to make sure that I am happy. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. going to linger on in suffering just because, you know, I, 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 I think that's maybe been the biggest, one of the biggest gifts from that divorce and that whole situation was reclaiming my power in situations of grief, in situations of pain, and being able to work through really hard 
uh, situations and um, and make really difficult decisions um, and not attach myself to the outcome. I had no expectations at that time. Listen, I had, was, you know, that day that I left, um, I called, I said, I, I talked to one of my brothers. I talked to one of my other brothers and, you know, I, I told them what was going on. I had no money. I didn't have a job um, at that time. And my brother's like, okay, I'm buying you a ticket. I'm buying you a ticket for today because I called this brother the next day. He, um, he said, I'm buying you a ticket today and you're getting out of that place today. He's like, he's like, that man manipulates you. And if you stay one night, you will not leave him. And from mm. the moment I talked to him, he called me every half hour. Are your bags packed? Are you ready? You're leaving. You're coming. Like, he's like, you need to leave. You need to leave. You need to leave. Like he pushed me the whole, you know, that whole that, day, which was horrendous. That's amazing. That's that amazing because that's a support system that you need in order sometimes to be able to get out of those kind of situations and oh, wow. acknowledging that you needed it. And if you had not, if you had not called them, you know, one brother to kind of give you that comfort and then the other one as well, then you, who knows whether, you know, how long you would have stayed there. And if you would have basically, what is it? If you walk on molasses, you get stuck, like you'd be stuck in like, the molasses of, you know, and the, and you'd be, your feet would be stuck there. Right. So, um, so wow, that, that is amazing that you had that support. Now I, I, so you left and then you, the ticket, did he get it for you to go, uh, live with back to them? Maryland, back, back, back to where your, your other family that was in the States was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay, I moved so back then to you, Maryland. Mm -hmm. I left that, you know, I left that afternoon, you know, you know, difficult things. You asked me about how it affected Simone. So Simone had no idea. Um, she, you know, he took her to preschool that morning. He went to get her from preschool and the flight was right around preschool. Oh my God. And uh, right after preschool. So I remember we like sat down in the diet in like our living room in the, of, our, of our place in, in Miami. And we like all the three of us hugged and cried. Um, you know, we're, you know, we're crying. And then, um, and then he took us, you know, he took us to the airport. Um, and you know, and Simone was like, where are we going? I'm like, I'm like, I don't recall exactly. I said, I'm like, yeah, we're going back to Maryland. She's like, what about daddy? And I was like, um, I'm like, I, you know, I'm like, I don't know. She's like, are we coming back? And I was like, we, I don't exactly remember what I said. I, I said sure. something in the terms that it's not up to me, basically. Mm. I, I think at that point, I still had some hope that he would fight for us in some way. I have no mm. idea. Um, but I do remember when I got to Maryland, I was like, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I think I had gone through a grieving process through the nine months. So, But when I got to Maryland, I was like, okay, my wedding ring is off. I'm ready to have fun. <laughs> Oh. You're ready. Now, now let's turn into that chapter. Then here you are now again, now for sure, starting anew with your daughter. Uh -huh. How long was the process uh, for you to then meet your now husband? Uh, how, how many, how long did it take for you to open that your heart again? Because again, you already knew you did want a family. You did want a family. Uh -huh. You did want uh, more children. Uh -huh. um, so uh, how long was that process before you uh, met your husband? I met my husband a month after I got back to Maryland. Mm -hmm. I met him a month and a half, I think. A month and a half after I got back to Maryland. We started dating a month after that, and we've been together almost 15 years. So oh it was my very goodness. fast. And it's two daughters later as well. So now I have later. three daughters. So these are the kind of things that I get chills anytime like this, because these are the kind of things in your life that would have not happened had you not taken those steps forward to searching for your joy um, yeah. mm -hmm. and to Absolutely. reclaiming who you are. And now it, with that learning of that first experience, how different did you come into this relationship Um in terms of uh, your identity, and um, so you I think it, yeah. So I think it's important, you know. We so when we met, we both were coming from. We were both still married, basically. We were both separated at that time. Mm -hmm. He had separated maybe six months earlier than I had. 
so we were, you know, we still had exes that we're dealing with and, you know, and, and difficult situations. Dealing with a divorce and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. he did mm-hmm. not have, um, he didn't have kids with his, um, with his uh, wife. He didn't have kids with his ex-wife. Um, but, um, so I think there was a big understanding. I think we were both really, really broken. We both came from relationships that were, had been very disempowered. Um, and I think the biggest thing we, we supported each other in our healing and I think Mm. our love helped us heal, but we never pressured things, you know, I continued through my grieving process, even though I was exploring this new, you know, exploring this new relationship. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right there. What you just said is so key because a lot of times people think it has to end completely. Like even when it comes to death, right? Like they just think grieve, grieving ends. Like, okay, if, if, if I lost a spouse, if somebody's died, let's say, and like it's suddenly as if it's going to, I'm going to wait till I'm done grieving before I even open up my heart again into another relationship. But sometimes you actually do it in the process of investigating this new yes, love yes. and this relationship. And mm-hmm. uh, and because you both came from the same uh, similar uh, uh, background in terms that you had just both had relationships that did not work, you were very compassionate towards each other's process in, in that, correct? Yes, absolutely. You know, I think mm-hmm. for, you know, you know, my, my husband now, he's the sweetest man, like he would leave me, you know, I get I come from this relationship where I felt like I was fat, I was not good enough, I wasn't smart enough, like, oh, it was bad. And then I had this guy who was like leaving me poems and like texting me <laughs> poems every morning. <laughs> so I was like, Oh, my God, you know, like, what is this, you know, and like, um, so, so, um, so good, you know, but I think I also, I, I took ownership of my healing as well. I think, um, I think another big lesson, and I'm finding, I'm realizing what the lessons were as I'm talking to you, actually. Um, I think another lesson was that I had, I had been so disempowered in my previous relationship that I was not willing away. I was not willing to give away my power in this relationship. So I took ownership of my healing. So as I was doing this, I, you know, I, right after I got back from Florida, I did landmark education, um, which is like, a, I don't know, it's like a self-development course, which uh, to me at that moment was if I had taken my, um, my emotional, um, all my emotional, uh, all the emotional aspects of my life through like a washing machine, a ringer, a ringer, a uh-huh. ringer Let's for three days. <laughs> it was very good. It, um, it really helped me detach myself from the outcome. Um, because during that, that time I had to like declare that I wanted my family. And I remember the coach saying, you know, and I was, and I was really willing to heal. So, you know, like, you know, when you, these conferences, like there's always that person that always goes up to the microphone and talks. Mm -hmm. I was that that person. Yes, that that was you. I was like, (laughs) I am here for this thing. Like I'm going to heal, you know, like I was literally, I was so done over suffering. I'm like, what do I need to do? Like, what book do I need to read? What, you know, what ritual do I need to do? Like I, you know, in, during my time in Colombia, I had even gone to meet with shamans to help me mm. on my, you know, with my, you know, with my relationship. With and then friend. this, I did landmark and I was up there and I remember saying like, I want, you know, like I want my family and, um, and the coach was like, Giselle, I'm so happy you're declaring it. You do understand he may not want it. Mm. And I was like, oh, I'm like, okay. You know, and I was, um, I'm like, okay. I'm like, yeah, 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 I know. But then afterwards I was like, do I know? Like, um, you know, but the fact that he said it just really made me detach myself, you know, from what he, you know, from what he wanted. Yeah, and there were a lot of grieving problems. There were breakdowns, you know, I had, you know, a few days that, I couldn't get up from bed, you know, and literally was just like in bed for like 48 hours, like crying, not being able to function. I, when I moved back to Florida, I moved in with my brother and his family, you know, and they helped me take care of, um, of Simone while I was going through this, you know, through this process. And um, I was not dating my husband at, at that time. That was probably shortly after. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, you know, with my husband, we gave each other the space, you know, to heal as well on our own. Um, and we've been together for 15 years, but for five years, we, we dated, we, you know, I, Simone was my, my number one priority. He met her, he met her very early on. 
<coughs> and she immediately attached himself, herself to him as a father figure. Um, from the first moment, we were even having, we were talking about this last night, about this with him. You know that she, um, you know she, she even never rejected the fact that her mom was dating somebody else. To her, it just seemed very natural. And I think when I met him, there was a big sense that I was coming home. You know that that was the person mm. that I, you know, that I needed. I needed. And that's meet. actually that's probably what Simone also saw, and that's why she recognized that in that relationship that she already felt like he was a dad, mm-hmm. her, her dad figure, you yeah. know? So her, her, her being recognized that as well, that that was home. Mm-hmm. Um, so not only did you, but did, she did as well. And that's, that's beautiful. Um, because he is, he is her dad really who was, uh, brought her up, um, yeah. Yeah. the that's last great. 15 years. So, um, Wow. Now I, you touched a little bit about landmark and Mm -hmm. then you've done quite a few things since then in terms of that personal development and growth. And then Mm -hmm. now what you do as well now. So, uh, let's go into that journey of personal growth and development and now how you yourself, uh, provide that as, um, as a, a service for other, uh, women as well. So um, at that time I did Landmark and I also, um, and I just did, you know, I, I read um, The Power of Now with Eckhart Tolle. I did, you know, I would do like audiobooks um, in my car and I had long commute. So I would just listen to all these um, personal development books. I read um, a ton of Deepak Chopra at that time. Um, I, I, um, I really wanted to, um, I really wanted to heal, you know, and I really wanted to be happy and I was willing to do the work, uh, whatever, you know, whatever entailed. Um, I started meditating, meditating, um, and then slowly, you know, put my life, um, you know, slowly put my life back together. Um, and then started experiencing a level of joy I had not experienced, um, experienced before Mm -hmm. and started to have a lot of fun, which I had actually stopped having when I got in a relationship with this person. Um, so I think that, um, I think that pushed me forward. I, I didn't see the value in, um, I didn't see that. I didn't really recognize the value of what I had gone through until many years later. I mean, it, that whole situation obviously pushed me to the, to loving uh, personal development and detaching myself from suffering. Um, and, and, um, and um, changing my perspective in that any situation that happens happens for me and not to me, um, and I have changed my approach in any in every situation I've encountered since then. You know, when anything happens in my life at that moment, especially like, okay, God, what is the lesson for me in this? Help me see it. Uh, what do I have to learn from this? Um, you know, what it, you know, what is the purpose? Um, so I ever since then I really. Um, put myself surrender to the lesson Mm -hmm. um i also recognized you know that i that that i had um that i was a big cause of the situations in my marriage um there's no true freedom until you find uh forgiveness in the in Mm. in a divorce um in any situation especially divorce especially you know what i went through we tend to get into the victim attitude and then when we are faced and face any situation um you know, in the perspective that we are the victim, then we completely give away our power in the situation. Um, mm. So I, um, I started doing, as, around that time, I started doing vision boards, which is part of what I, I, I do in the vision project with, with women mm-hmm. now. I started doing vision boards. And then it's around the time I think The Secret came out and I heard um, Oprah say um yeah then an Oprah show she she was interviewing some of the authors from the secret and then he um they said how true forgiveness was being able to thank a person for the experience so I decided to thank my ex-husband for the experience um, did you call him I did or did you just him. thank you did call him okay I didn't, I didn't call him then. Oh, oh um, you had the, was, that, it was like that personal, like really for you letting go, like a true letting, letting go, go was actually exactly. forgiving 
forgiving him for the experience uh, and thanking him that you for guys the experience. Had gone you know, because and here I was, I was experiencing, uh, you know, I was I was happy, you know, I was have, mm -hmm. I was experiencing a lot of joy, you know, I was in a new relationship, I was finding my power, um, but at that time, around that time, he told me he was going to marry the his girlfriend, um, the girl he'd been dating while we were married, and that was painful. That was painful. Um, but I, I knew at that time that I didn't love him. So I'm like, so what's going on? Like, I don't love him, but I'm feeling grief over this. So I was like, oh, well, this is ego. And then that's when I heard like um, Oprah talk about forgiveness, you know, thanking the person. So I decided to start thanking his girlfriend and him for the experience. Like, it, and it was just like a prayer style. Like at night, I was like, Thank you. You know, I would just think of them in my, you know, like in my mind's eye and be like, thank you. Thank you for the experience. Thank you for the experience. And these, these thoughts and these words did not come out easily. The first few times I wanted to throw up. I was like, I was nauseous. It was like, I wanted to gag. Um, it just, oh God, it felt so like, so unnatural and so forced, awful. Forced. Yeah. Like, you it know, was, so yeah. forced, you know, but I did it for a few months. I did it for a few months, and then one day, I, I had a breakthrough um, in where I saw, I saw a relationship, um, and I saw, you know, what I had done in the relationship that had caused, um, you know, that I took ownership of of actions I did during the relationship that might have caused the breakdown of the relationship, basically. Mm, mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I, it was like not blaming middle. yourself necessarily, but no, taking no, ownership. No, not yeah. Just taking and, you know, ownership. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, 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 you know, and taking owner, you know, and a lot of, a lot of times people mistake forgiveness for taking away someone's responsibility for something they did. Mm, mm -hmm. And, and, you know, Forgiving is, is a gift you give yourself. You're not doing it for the other person. You know, I, mm -hmm. I really forgave him for me. I wasn't expecting anything from him. Um, I wasn't, again, my mindset was still being happy. So, okay, this is causing suffering. Like I'm feeling not good because he said he's going to marry this person. I'm not in a relationship with him. I don't love him. You know, I don't love him. Uh, why is this causing me this? I need to work through these feelings, you know, and the wife figured the way to work through these feelings was, you know, creating this ritual of gratitude towards them. Mm -hmm. um, and then after I went through that and I sent him that email, you know, I realized I, the fact that I was so disempowered during my marriage had caused uh, problems in our relationship because he was stronger, quote unquote, he was stronger, like his temperament. So I held on to his strength for him to pull me up, right? And and um, I think career-wise and, and in my life, I haven't had that clear vision of what I wanted to do, um, whereas he's been very focused forever. He always knew what he wanted to do. So I hung on to his dreams to make up for me not knowing mm. exactly, not having clarity not over having what clarity. I yeah, wanted. Yeah. It was, um, yeah, so the, I, the focus went on him. Mm -hmm. I focus went on him. So I just wrote him an email like, um, you know, like, you know, I'm sorry. I, you know, I recognize now that these, you know, I did these things during our, you know, our relationship. I, um, I said, I also didn't give our relation, our family of three, they, um, the importance that it needs. I, it was, I, I didn't let go of my extended family. It worked out in this relationship because that extended family was such a support during that transition and such an emotional support for my daughter, um, which she needed. But it, you know, it was also detrimental to my marriage as well. Um, so um, I, um, you know, I wrote him this email, you know, saying I'm sorry, you know, like I, I see what I did, you know, and I'm taking ownership of it. And he apologized. Um, he wrote mm. back a very beautiful email saying, I am so sorry, you know, you, you know, you did the best you could, you know, and I should have done better. Uh, please forgive me. I didn't, um, you know, I didn't do the thing, you know, I didn't do things the way I should have done them. Um, and then after that, we were able to be friends, actually. That's we good. Through, so, <laughs> yeah, like you would have never imagined that 
that that would have even happened. But then at the same time, it it took all that process. To yeah, get this to was that like point. over. This was over. That's the gray in between. That's the gray in between. That's the gray. That's the gray in between. And then the gratitude component. There had to be gratitude, like even just to the fact that you were saying how you um, would thank them and these prayers that you would have to yourself, you know, basically of just mm-hmm. really giving gratitude for the experience, being grateful for the experience that you had had, even as it had been hard because you wouldn't be in your present had you not gone through that. Um, and that was the way of you kind of um, lavandote el, cere- el cerebro, like washing, brainwashing, brainwashing. yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> brainwashing yourself. I used to do that it- term. <laughs> You know, I used to do that term, like, now that you said it, I use that term so much, you know, and I even do it in my workshops with women, um, um, how we, um, how we have to brainwash ourselves. So I did a lot of affirmations and mm-hmm. then I started going, attending a church is called Unity Church and it's a, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a non-sectarian. Yeah. It's, it's, um, oh my gosh. Non-denominational. Non-denominational. It's non-denominational, but it's, um. So my mom actually found that church for me. She Somebody invited her and she went and then she went to the bookstores and then the bookstores full of like the books that we read. <laughs> so she's like, oh my God, Giselle, I think I found your church. So it was if like anything, I found your bookstore or yeah, I, found I found your, your bookstore. bookstore. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, so it's, it's, it's Christian based, but it's very esoteric and it's very, uh, oh God, it's, I can't think of the term but anyway um, um wait we i have i have the i i uh, miss not mystical um oh, oh I, Christian, I, um no i know it's gonna the the word would come to our mind probably as you're talking i know what you're i know what you're saying because um because i attended your your niece's baptism yeah there, right so okay. but yes yeah, so i'm been- trying to <laughs> but i'm trying to think uh when when you incorporate the other, but yeah, I'm at a, a loss. I, I can't find that that word right now. But go ahead, continue the, the story. So she found that church for you because she found that she church for see, me. Yeah. So I, you know, so that that church was actually a big, um, you know, was also like a big support for me during that time. I, you know, and I think um, I, and you know, your listeners, I definitely want them to understand this was like a lot of spiritual work. You know, I did. Mm. Um, I did ton of affirmations. I would repeat and write affirmations a hundred times per day. Any thought that wow. I, you know that I needed to work on. I mean, it wasn't like oh, I casually would do like a little meditation. No, I worked my butt off to heal. I, you know, I listen. I started listening to podcasts around that time, and I think most people don't even know that there were podcasts back then. Wow! But I started listening because- to podcasts. I would download. I would download sermons from like you, uh, uh, other unity um, unity mm-hmm. uh, ministers from around the country, and and download them. I would listen to them repeatedly. I it, I mean, this was like I took on my healing as if it was my it was my work. It was job. work. It was work. Yeah, like it was. It's, it's it. But that's that's a really good point that you're saying because a lot of times people just see the after and don't realize all the journey somebody's yeah. been to to get to that point, right? <laughs> so. Uh, for you, it's just kind of like uh, being a bodybuilder. A bodybuilder doesn't suddenly decide, oh, I'm going to compete today. Mm-hmm, no, mm-hmm. they've gone through a whole bunch right. of It's not like, oh, I and- worked up for two weeks and I don't have the muscles yeah, to go I'm to ready. like a, yeah. a, no, a competition. No. Yeah. No. That mm-hmm. doesn't happen that way. You go through hardships and growth and work yourself yes. to become and I who brain- you are. And I brainwashed myself. Like I mm-hmm. I brainwashed myself. I it's like, like retraining. Drilled. It's retraining your brain to... Re- Retraining, yeah, yes. retraining, yeah, retraining my brain. I don't, you know, I, I don't, I do it occasionally now. I've never, I, you know, because I haven't gone through a situation to that level now. But you know, that time, in a way, was life or death. You know, and um, and I wanted to build. I wanted a family. I wanted to be happy. I wanted my daughter to be family. You know, to be happy. And you know, I was willing. I was willing to do. I was willing to do the work. So it did require a lot of work for. Uh, you know, from a lot of resources, you know, and, and, and being self-driven, um, being self-driven again, I think the fact that I was not thinking of myself as a victim empowered me to, to do and take action, um, to, to feel good and to feel better. I, I also, I also didn't take 
my identity from one relationship and moved it to the other relationship. My mm -hmm. healing was independent of my new relationship. I, my husband at some point was saying like, oh, I helped you heal. I'm like, oh, no, no, buddy, you did not. <laughs> I mean, like, I'm like, now I think now I'm even being able to give him a little more credit um, because obviously his love was very healing in many aspects. But I was like, uh-uh. I worked my butt off for this. Like this, I earned these. Like these, <laughs> this is not, it didn't come free. These are my medals. These are my these, gold medals. <laughs> these are my medals. You know, and I, 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 I've seen this quote a couple of times and I, and I had a conversation with another woman close to me in my life who's very strong. And we mentioned it quickly because I'm, people perceive me as being very strong. And I, 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 I know I am very strong, um, when difficult situations come after, you know, after that divorce, I immediately go into solution mode. I don't, I don't stay in you victim mode. You don't dwell mode. on it. Mm -hmm. I don't dwell on it for a second. Immediately it was like, okay, what is this for? What is the lesson? What do I need to do? And then I declare like, okay, whatever this is, as dark as this moment may look, like this situation is going to be for our blessing, for my blessing. And like the outcome of this is going to be positive. And when we get to the other side, we're going to be better for it. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and there, you know, when hard things come, that's just the way I operate. And that's just the way I go to. And, you know, I go into action mode and, um, and I just move forward. And so people from outside and even people close to me, you know, people that know like situations that I've gone through, um, as even my parents, my dad, you know, surprised that I'm quickly go into solution mode, find a solution, start acting for it, as, as start acting on it. And then, um, and, you know, my capacity to not dwell. But from the outside, people assume that is easy, right? Because it looks like, oh, this happened and Giselle easily, you know, navigated through it. But I still <laughs> they go. They don't see all the 15 years of they of, don't uh, see, you know, I, process, yeah. you know, I'm the type of person that, you know, if I'm going through a difficult situation, I will find on YouTube an affirmation video of like for eight hours for what, you know, like, you know, and then I'll wear sleep with headphones on, listen to affirmations all night. Wow. I That's also use, girl. Uh, I also use, um, binaural, what are they called? Uh, binaural beats and they, they, um, they transform the uh, connections in your brain. Um, and I do that as well. Um, you know, and I don't do this every day, but if I'm going through a certain situation where I feel like I need to brainwash myself against some, you know, and, and um, up level my energy or transform my energy or point of view towards a certain situation, I do all this work. You know, I do the affirmations, I do the journaling. Um, I, I work hard at it. But people don't see that. So a lot of people mm -hmm. assume that because they don't see it, they think it's easy. And because mm. it looks easy, it doesn't mean that it's easy to carry, right? I just right. choose not to suffer. So mm -hmm. the way I know how to get over the suffering is to work through these things and, and find a solution and operate and, you know, and just, and just move forward. I also, <coughs> excuse me, I also feel that the fact that I went through being a single mom you know, leaving a husband when I had no job, I had no home, I had a daughter. Um, and knowing that I got through it has taken a lot of fear away from facing certain situations. Because mm. um, you've already been through something that it was so hard already that some of the other ones just make it a little bit easier to manage because you've already been through one that's tough. Right, right, yeah. exactly. Well, wow. now you you've talked a few times about your vision project, yeah, the vision project, and um, now tell us a little bit about this and um, how our listeners can find you because now suddenly all this work that you've done yourself of personal growth and development, landmark, uh, reading. Uh, Tony, we've gone to Tony Robbins, which you didn't mention here, but I know you oh, have because yeah. I'm your friend. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Tony so. Robbins, Gabby Bernstein, Bernstein. Um, oh, a yeah. lot of Eckhart I, Tolle, Deepak Chopra, yeah, all these, every, all these. Yeah, and you've gone to personally or listened or read yes. all these different things. Um, and then you've also hired life coaches before mm -hmm. as well. And then you yourself uh, are now helping other people. So... So, all this journey now tell us about the journey of how now suddenly 
All that leads to now helping others. So I think it was about eight or nine years ago, I signed up for this online um, gift exchange. Um, And I don't think there was even Facebook back then. I think it was just, I I mean, there was Facebook. There was no Instagram then. Um, So I signed up for this gift exchange. And then I got, I got connected with a girl from, um, from Argentina and um, who's still a dear friend of mine, although we've never physically met. Mm. So we get like your bliss tribe, like your bliss. Yes. Yeah. And you need to make that happen. You guys need to meet in person. I know. Yeah, we should. So after, so we get connected and then she, um, and a few weeks, you know, we had to send the gifts in, but then I got injured. I had to have ankle surgery and then she, so we couldn't send our gifts on time, you know, per the terms of like the exchange. And then she sends me an email. She's like, Hey, Giselle, you know, I'm so sorry. Like I'm, you know, my husband, you know, just um, came up to me like last week and said he was done. Like he, he didn't love me anymore that we were separating. Um, and then I started coaching her. Mm. Um, I, I coached her through the whole process. Um, and, and in fact, her husband and her are still together. That's amazing. And so, so that I was started- the first, that was the first time that you really had were put in that in that capacity of coaching somebody else was that yeah Mm -hmm. I um I you know I coached her through it I send her articles I send her books I send her oh my gosh um I sell her all sorts of information uh we it was all through email too um because I don't I don't I don't think there was even like whatsapp or anything at that time um but I coached her through it and she followed through um, you know, she followed through and then, um, you know, we sent our gifts, whatever. And I think it was like a year and a half later, you know, she emailed me and she's like, Oh my God, Giselle, thank you so much. She's like, your coaching saved my marriage. Wow. She's like, your coaching saved How did that saved- feel? How did that oh feel my God. for you, I felt, you know, to get that I confirmation enjoyed, from the universe? Yeah. I enjoyed coaching her so much. I enjoyed coaching her so, so, so much, you know, but then the fact was like, you know, that, that, that I was able to help her. Um, I'm like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. Like, I want to, I want to help women, you know, I want to help women, you know, in situations like this to gain their power because with women in marriages, so many of us give away our power completely. You know, we get lost and, uh, it's so painful. Um, and for me, yeah, and we, we think that we have to become one um, in that relationship sometimes and forget our individuality. Yes. I, I love that Khalil Gibran. Have you read the Khalil Gibran um, book, The Prophet? Years have ago. Years ago. Yeah. The one about marriage. It's like he talks about two, like, like two pillars, the pillars of a temple stand apart mm-hmm. and the cypress and the willow grow not in each other's shadow. And mm-hmm. My husband and I, we read that at our wedding and I just, that's always stuck in my mind of that, how that individuality still has to exist in order for that marriage to have the proper support, um, you know, the foundation to be strong. Um, it's that individuality in that marriage. So that is that beautiful. Visual- that, you know, that's why it irks me whenever people say things like, um, oh, my better half. Or I'm like, oh. uh-uh, no, 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 no. Like I'm, or in Spanish, <laughs> mi media naranja. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I am whole myself. Like mm-hmm. I just, you know, and uh, I, I told my husband, um, because we lived together many years before we got married, but when we're going to move in together, um, I told him, and he was so heartbroken over this because I, um, and he, yeah, we had conversations about it like for years later because I was like, no, 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 no. I don't need you. Like. I love you I and want I want you in my you, life. Yeah. But I yeah. don't I don't need you. And you know, I think men get so attached to the fact that they're needed that they have to be superheroes that he did not understand that concept. Like he mm. was so like it broke him the fact that I didn't need him. Um but the reality is that I don't. Like I know, you know, and I and I love my husband and I love my family, you know. And of course if something happened it would be so painful, you know, but I know for a fact that I am strong alone, you know, like I, I'm okay. I, mm-hmm. I can be on my own. Um, like maybe the other part of like marriage, like sometimes you get really hard after you go through, uh, you know, um, you get very non, um, you don't, I don't know how to say it. Um, 
you don't play around with hard facts. And I think part of the vision, you know, what you were saying about like the vision project and starting uh, to support women after that situation, you know, after that opportunity to help her and coach her, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I started, I didn't really know how to get started or how to, you know, how to work with women really. Uh, Cause all this time I was also having babies and then, you know, I have a, you know, I, I had having, a it sounds like you're like having babies, like as if you had like a whole bunch of oh, I had I had two, two daughters, but, it felt like a lot. <laughs> but they, well, it was because they were so close in, in age, you know, too. so it's like <clears throat> right. within a three year period, you had two daughters. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And then I was also, I, the other thing, you know, and then I had like a high school daughter and a, a, you know, other babies. And then, um, I was um, used to being a mom of a, you know, single child. I, I, to me, it's like a whole new thing having two kids at the same time. I've never <laughs> done that before. That's, that's a whole other podcast, girl, talking about yeah. parenting, but that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. That makes it a whole different, but then, so, okay. So in that then creating the vision project, then, so um, I created, I created, now, a yeah. How long, how long has it been around? And, um, so the vision project yeah. has been around about a couple, about two years, close to two years. And it's, you know, and I also felt called to, I, so I felt called to support like a, more of the Spanish speaking, um, community because I felt that there was not as much content there. Um, so I created a community where we just support women in healing and creating uh, a better or a higher version of their lives and empowering them. Um, I think my biggest thing was being um, reminding women of their self-worth um, and helping women find the courage to face hard situations um, and make difficult choices to find their happiness. You know, we, we tend to victimize ourselves. Um, we tend to lose, you know, give away our power to spouses, to jobs, to our children. And, um, and we lose our identity in the process. <clears throat> so After I created the visual, you know, I, I created the vision project and, um, you know, and, and creating that online community <clears throat> on Facebook, I, uh, I started hosting um, women's circles. And um, so I, ho I host like small workshops and I think it's been, um, it's been a beautiful journey learning how as women we can uh, learn from each other's stories and how sometimes and how every woman has a story of survival um, at mm. some point in their lives. Mm. But we tend not to recognize it either. You know, we just, you know, we're, you know, we, we're strong women. We, you know, we raise kids um, and we give so much that we forget to give ourselves. And then we don't even give ourselves recognitions for the times that we have come across difficult situations and survived. And survived so. it. And that is, that is, um, That is a key point right here, and I'd actually like to end our interview with that because that is one thing that we all should remember is the fact of how uh, in the middle of it, it, when you're in the thick <laughs> in the thick of the storm, in the middle of it, you do not even think that you'll ever be able to get out and okay. see happiness again or you know or or anything in that matter and um And then once you overcome those hardships in your life, uh, sometimes you even forget that you've even lived through them. Like you're saying, yes, some of your women absolutely. that have even forgot. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, so it's good to remember and go back to those moments in which you've already overcome so that when other challenges like that occur, and I think that that's the beauty of that group, the groups that you create and empowering these women of seeing, of seeing themselves as these strong beings that they are and resilient women that they are mm -hmm. so that in case other circumstances arise later in their future in which they're confronted with difficult decisions or grieving or anything in their life that they know that they have already the tools to be able to overcome that because they've already done it before. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like you did. Mm -hmm. My friend, we could probably talk for ever here Forever. and there would be so many nuggets of wisdom that could come from this conversation and thank you so much for sharing your journey of grief of gratitude and all the gray in between mm -hmm. i love you thank you again oh and before we go how can people find you if you so want to just share a little find bit me on instagram at giselle Temenes. And um, on Facebook, um, The Vision Project, a Facebook group, and also on Instagram, The Vision Project. 
The Vision Project um, on Instagram, as well as Facebook, and then her personal uh, Giselle Tamines. And for a lot of inspiring posts, and also if you live in an area in which Giselle holds one of her beautiful workshops, um, then you can attend in person, or you can also attend her virtual uh, workshops that she sometimes holds as well. So thank you again, my friend. I love you. Love and, you. Uh, and thank you again for sharing your heart. Thank you. Bye, bye. Thank you again so much for choosing to listen today. I hope that you can take away a few nuggets from today's episode that can bring you comfort in your times of grief. If so, it would mean so much to me if you would rate and comment on this episode. And if you feel inspired in some way to share it with someone who may need to hear this, please do so. Also, if you or someone you know has a story of grief and gratitude that should be shared so that others can be inspired as well, please reach out to me. And thanks once again for tuning in to Grief, Gratitude, and the Gray in Between podcast. Have a beautiful day.